Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Ajay Kumar. Uh, this is a live stream, so I guess my flubbed intro for this show will not get clipped and all of you will have seen it and it cannot be removed from the internet. And is, is this my first flubbed intro? I think it might be my first flubbed intro in years, so please please be gentle and be kind. We have a really cool thing here mm -hmm. today. Uh, we have the LG G7 ThinQ phone. Uh, if you are watching us live on Facebook, then please ask questions, make comments. Uh, tell me if you've ever seen me flub the intro before. Social Pete here is uh, here to take your questions and your comments and relay them to us. If you're watching us later on YouTube, please be kind with the like and subscribe button. Uh, we have no editing. You are watching this as it happens. Uh, and of course, come back to PC Mag's YouTube page uh, daily on weekdays uh, with uh, one uh, new one cool thing every day. What is wrong with me? Have I not had enough coffee today? I think that's what happened. I think what happened is that I got a small coffee this morning from the deli across the street. Classic mistake. Yes, yeah. yes, it was weak deli coffee. And as a result, my brain is functioning at about 70% capacity, which is a pity, because this is a really nice phone, mm -hmm. right? It is, it is a nice phone. This is the LG G7 ThinQ, and it is LG's flagship phone. So you're looking at this uh, and comparing it to basically the Galaxy S9 and uh, to some extent the iPhone. Uh, but this is where it lands in that like really top tier category of phones. Yeah, and so we're getting to a point right now where it's really difficult to differentiate between some of these phones when it comes to the quality of basic features, right? right. Yeah, so I mean on a basic level, uh, in terms of performance, obviously it has a Snapdragon 845, it has uh, either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM, um, it's fast, uh, battery life is pretty good, 3000 milliamp battery lasts for almost 7 hours uh, of when we tested uh, streaming video nonstop. Um, so what it really comes down to with high-end features is the camera. And so the G7 is interesting because it uses an AI camera similar to the way uh, Huawei did for the Mate 10 Pro. So um, it basically, let me launch it. And if you point the camera at something, it'll start generating a bunch of guesses for what it is. Uh, pointing it at Sasha, it'll... Um, Am I an infinity pool? Am I food? It, it, it'll call... No, I, it, it got you right am away. Am I a poodle? It, no, it got him right away. It said it says he's a person. Okay. So if I pointed at something a little bit vaguer, cauliflower, document, flip flop, close up, <laughs> red. So it's trying to figure out what that object is. <laughs> and then um, it tweaks the camera settings and the camera modes and um, everything um, so that you can take a better picture. Okay, so now let's talk about more basic specs before we get deeper into the camera. And and I would say that when you are, when you are debating between the LG G7 and say the Samsung Galaxy S9, the camera is going to be the major differentiator for you, but let's set some ground rules here. Uh, memory, storage, network support, what have we got here? So uh, Snapdragon 845, um, it, this is 64 uh, gigs of storage. Uh, you can get 128, uh, four and six gigs of RAM, depending on the SKU. Micro SD card slot? Uh, micro SD card slot, you, um, it's a, uh, yeah, expandable storage, micro SD card slot, um, network connectivity, uh, so it, it supports, um, LG hasn't confirmed carrier support yet because we're still waiting on pricing, but um, it has bands for all the carriers. It supports T-Mobile band uh, It supports T-Mobile band 71. 71, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, gigabit LTE with 4x4 MIMO right. on all major carriers. So this is, these, these are kind of table stakes for the best phones nowadays. Um, by the way, if I know several of you are going to ask about pricing. LG has not announced pricing. It is really infuriating. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason that we have reviewed this phone entirely and we can't give it a rating is because we don't know how much it costs. Um, but let's take a question. Uh, is the battery removable? The battery is not removable. Uh, like m the most LG phones that have come out recently, uh, it is completely sealed in. The back is Gorilla Glass 5. 
Uh, it is drop resistant, uh, but you do not get a removable battery. And it's waterproof. It is waterproof and drop resistant. Okay. Okay. So now uh, let's let's go to the bottom of the phone before. Like I, I want to wrap up with the camera, so I'm doing everything before mm. the camera. Um, let's go to the bottom of the phone where we see a speaker and a headphone jack, and both of those have special capabilities in some right. way, right? Uh, especially if you're interested in audio, you're an audio file. Uh, you like to listen to music. You so, like to listen to audio files. So um, let me let me do something. Uh, so they have an extra loud uh, speaker that uses the phone's uh, body as um, a resonance chamber, basically. Can you can you pump? Now I gotta say that's loud, but it's tinny. At, this is max, so it is tinny. Uh, but if you touch the back of the phone, you can you can feel it vibrate. Still though, tinny. Now what isn't tinny though is the headphone jack output, right? right. The headphone jack. Um, so this is a 32-bit uh, uh, high resolution audio because um, it has a quad DAC. So uh, basically, there's a bunch of audio settings that you can uh, tweak. Uh, right, it's it's all built in. Um, Hi-Fi uh, quad DAC, so you can do, uh, you have left-right balance controls, uh, you can set audio uh, profiles, you can control the equalizer for your music. But you're not necessarily going to hear a difference unless you're using right. uncompressed, high-quality music right. files like FLAC files, for right. instance. If you, you either had to use FLAC files, you had to use um, high-resolution uh, audio streaming from uh, something like Tidal, or uh, I guess Spotify, you can uh, change mm -hmm. the audio quality. Uh, but basically, uh, if you're a dedicated audiophile and you plug in with a good pair of headphones, uh, you can tell tell the difference. Okay, okay. And uh, for uh, for wireless music, we have Bluetooth five with Aptex, right? Right. Yeah. Bluetooth five. Um, most most companies have started adopting that now, so it's okay. pretty standard. So we've gone through a lot of the basic features here. Um, let, oh, we didn't mention the screen. It's a Quad HD right. it, OLED. Uh, it is not OLED. It is uh, it is an LCD screen, and you can see that it has the infamous notch that everyone in, who's an Android enthusiast apparently hates. Um, so you can turn it off. Uh, I have it really colorful right you now. You have it as like a psychedelic yeah, rainbow. Yeah, I have it as a rainbow. Um, but you can turn it off. You can make it black. Uh, there, it'll still show you like time, date, things like that. Um, it, it's it's not you you get used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know. I would, it's not that different than like the iPhone, mm. so just a notch. Okay, before we get to the camera, does anyone have any questions about the phone features or for instance, a better pre-show caffeination protocol for me? Uh, just a couple specs to clarify. One was the processor and is it band 66 and 71? Yes, it, so this has all of the bands that US carriers are using right now. One thing we don't know though, is whether the carrier versions of the phone are going to firmware block each other's bands. Um, one way that there's a little bit of a cloud around the G7 ThinQ right now is that uh, we don't have the individual carrier pricing and we don't have the individual carrier firmware band layouts. So what that means is that if you get a T-Mobile phone, for instance, it will. if you get from T-Mobile, it will definitely have band 66 and 71. But will it have band 30, which is an AT&T band that T-Mobile doesn't use? It might be blocked in firmware. The AT&T version would definitely have band 30. But will it have band 71? It might be blocked in firmware. We don't know until the carriers actually come out with their versions of the phone. Um, processor is a Snapdragon 845. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ask someone something else? No, but uh, okay. there is one thing we haven't mentioned. So it has a Google Assistant button on the right side. Right. Uh, so pressing it will bring up Google Assistant. Um, it's it's okay, I guess. It's not as obnoxious as Bixby. Uh, you can't disable it. You can't remap it. Uh, if you find Google Assistant useful, you might like it. Um, I don't like the idea of hardware yeah, buttons yeah. Uh, doing that when you could just re use but a different one. At least it's not Bixby. At least it's not Bixby. Okay, so <laughs> let's get to the camera. So uh, on the back, we have what, what, what I consider to be LG's specialty, which is LG's specialty, which is they have a standard camera, but they also have a wide angle camera. Right. 
And now, you did these shots in the standard mode, right? Right, these are all taken in standard mode, because um, so basically uh, I did a shootout with the G7 and the S9 Plus, which is probably the best camera on a phone uh, you can get right now. Uh, so these are all standard mode. Uh, Samsung doesn't have a wide angle mode, so just right. for comparison, uh, they're both the same, uh, same mode. Um, so L uh, G7 has the AI camera on, and uh, S9 is sh uh, shooting in auto. So um, this is basically the outcome outdoors in, yeah. in good lighting, in sunlight. So you, if you look really closely, it's kind of hard to see on the screen, but if you look really closely, you can see that the differences are not that big. So in this shot, the G7 sharpens a little bit more um, and the color is a little bit more saturated, but also on the colder side. Here, it's um, a little bit softer. Uh, the S9 kind of has the sunlight on the building uh, reflecting off of it. Um, and it's kind of reversed on, uh, on the other shot I took. So this one, uh, G7 is smoothing out the building surface, and here you see more shadows and textures. So um, mm -hmm. if you scroll through the other shots, it's all it's all very similar. It's uh, really the, close. The G7's AI camera is uh, really good at making uh, tweaks to when it has a setting. So these were low light. So it uses, um, so it turns on the super bright camera mode, which uses pixel binning. Yeah, and I'd like to, I'd like to point out that uh, everybody seems to have their own low light approach this year, but they all seem to be coming out with relatively equivalent results. For instance, the G7 does this pixel binning thing where it combines four pixels into one for low light. However, the S9 Plus has a f1.5 physical shutter mm -hmm. that opens up the shutter extra wide for low light. Right. Uh, this, uh, the G7 ThinQ's image ends up being lower megapixels because of the pixel binning. Right. Um, but uh, the the result, especially when you convert it down to web format, very similar. It's, uh, yeah, like, I mean, if you look at these two, like, there's some, some slight color differences, but uh, in overall, like, in terms of noise, in terms of, like, uh, focus, like, there's, they're, they're extremely similar. They're both uh, extremely good cameras. Uh, so ultimately what it comes down to if you want to decide between the S9 Plus or the G7 is if you prefer the zoom lens or the wide angle lens. Yeah, and I would say that's the same, uh, that's the same to some extent, at least from the camera perspective with the latest iPhones as well, because the iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 10 uh, both have cameras of about this level that have the 2X rather than the wide angle. Right. Uh, let's take another question. Based on what we know about the OnePlus 6, how is that going to stack up? Um, so the OnePlus 6 is being announced, I believe, at around 1 p.m. Eastern today. It's later today in London. And um, I, we don't know a lot about the OnePlus 6's camera right now. And I think that is one of the big questions out there. I think... Uh, we're getting to we're getting to a point this year where there's uh, there there's a very commodity level of basic features mm -hmm. in terms of that Snapdragon 845 processor, right. uh, the RAM, quad the HD storage, screen, yeah. yeah, yeah, quad HD screens. Although OnePlus doesn't typically do quad HD right. screens, they generally do 1080p screens. Right. Um, but uh, you can, aspect ratio, yeah, I guess, yeah, 18 by nine, tall nine, aspect ratios. Yeah, so, so uh, a lot of that is very similar. So the question becomes, what is OnePlus going to do with the camera? And that is one of the things that I think we should really look at later today at the OnePlus 6 launch. And, uh, you know, hang out. We will have a hands-on with the OnePlus 6 shortly after the launch, as far as I know. So uh, definitely keep an eye on PC Mag uh, later today for more OnePlus 6 coverage. Now, uh, so back to the LG G7. Mm -hmm. We haven't put a star rating on it. We have not. And that's because of the price, right? Right, yeah, we're waiting on the price. Uh, LG says it's gonna be in the ballpark of the G6, but not quite. Uh, the G6 launched for around like six, in the 690 range, um, maybe a little bit less than what the S9 is currently. Um, so it really, it really depends uh, on what the price comes out. If it's a lot less, then it's yeah. a extremely competitive phone. If this is if this is $100 less mm -hmm. than the S9 and $200 less than the S9 Plus. Right. 
you know, what does that say for what we're recommending to people? We, we might need to consider what we're recommending to people. Um, yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it does come down to personal preference. Um, maybe the audio, audio features would only appeal to like a narrow category of audio files, but um, the wide angle, angle lens is something I'm a huge fan of. Like, barrel distortion has been lessened a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a 109 degree wide angle lens. Mm -hmm. You can capture an entire, entire building. You can capture big wide scenery shots. It's great for travel. Uh, the zoom lens, uh, some people like it. I'm not a huge fan, but uh, if you like to get in there, like the mm -hmm. zoom lens is good. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. hard to decide. Let's take one more question. Will it come in different colors when it launches? Yes, so there, uh, there's, this is blue, there's gray, there's, um, I believe there's one other color, one or two other colors. Uh, it won't be the same colors on all four carriers. Yeah, you should expect different colors on different carriers, and the carriers will announce that. I believe it is going on pre-sale, uh, what, May 24th? Yeah. Around then? Yeah. Uh, so it's black, blue, gray, and rose. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll depend on carriers. Yeah, so it's going on pre-sale around May 24th, going on full sale around June 1st. Uh, so over the next couple of weeks, we will hear more about the uh, pricing and mm -hmm. availability of the LG G7 ThinQ, but this is a very encouraging phone. It looks very competitive against the Samsung Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus and other leading Android phones. Uh, and uh, we, we're, we're feeling good about this one. Uh, any last questions? Terrific. Well, thank you all for watching, and this has been One Cool Thing with PCMag.com. If you are on Facebook, please return at 10 a.m. tomorrow. We will have another cool thing. If you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Uh, we have a new One Cool Thing every day on PCMag's YouTube page, and uh, we'll see you soon.